Miss Jimmy. Are y'all ready to rock and roll tonight? I said, my name is Jimmy. What's happening, baby? Are y'all ready to rock and roll tonight? Have you experienced like this? And as you can tell, I am a very sick puppy. <laughs> I travel all over the world. I got my, my first driver's license I ever got was in uh, Munich, Germany. Wild. I tried to walk across the street to the driver's license bureau. I said, <laughs> I took the test, man. I got in there. <laughs> <Come> on. <laughs> Place, but for some reason, I am staying in a hotel that's next door to this nightclub here in Montreal called the Metropolis. <laughs> My bathroom is a rave party. <laughs> it's weird, man. You can hear that next door, man. You get in there.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another installment of the Frankie Sausage Show right here on Pioneer 90.1. And uh, this today's guest on my show is none other than the legendary funny man. Uh, if you remember him from uh, the Police Academy movies or Spaceballs, I give you Michael Winslow. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. And for those of you Pokemon fans... <laughs> Sorry, just had to pull up the little pokeball. What's going on? <laughs> not much, man. I mean, not not much at all. Yeah, uh, you know, it's a very it's a thrill to have you on the show. I never thought I'd ever see the day that I'd ever be talking to you. You know. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. And uh, I appreciate you for for letting me interview you. I mean, this this is gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, I've always I've always loved your blend of comedy. I, uh, I mean, it's so different. And I was even thinking la or saying last night uh, after I called you and. You know how I like most comedians out there that uh, just when when they are up on the stage and whatnot, they they are just like most of the time just talking to people. Well, you 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 make it more interactive. You make it more like it's uh, you know like like a cartoon show or something like that, or just you know just you make it fun. How how did you ever get started with uh, uh, doing voices and whatnot? Well, having a strange sense of humor seems to help. <laughs> it seems to help a lot. Um, well, you know, working on Gremlins, I, I, I got a pretty clear picture of what was funny to some people and scary to others, and, and I just, just just sort of learned from there. You know, we, we know you know we learn by doing, uh, but for me, it's, it's it's just been it's just been the, the conglomerate of everything together. It's the body of work, I guess. I learned everything a little at a time. I mean, we're all over the world, you know, doing this. I mean, uh, I could be in Finland, you know, in the next couple of weeks. You know, I could be in Finland and, and the same sound. And different things. That everyone, there seems to be no language barrier. Oh yeah. So I could be in, I could be in, I could be in Japan, <laughs> and I'd still be able to communicate somehow. Oh, wow, that's that's amazing. That's, you know, uh, were you ever in, inspired by anybody? <laughs> were there any other people that did noises like like you did, or, or like that inspired you to do this, or just? Well, everybody inspires me. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, how, I don't know how to begin. <laughs> uh, uh, to me, to me, you know, humor is. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, you know, I, I, I watch everything. I mean, a little bit of everything. You know, I don't. Doesn't matter where I am on, on this planet. You know, there, there, there is definitely comedy there, and there's definitely an, an, an interacting line for everyone that we all can relate to. Doesn't matter where you are. I mean, there's always something. Oh yeah, and uh, now, uh, now you've been uh, travel all over the world doing your stand-up, going back to your roots and whatnot. Uh, now you. Uh, now, I, I talked to a friend of mine before we, we uh, started this interview named Mike Massey, and he remembers meeting you when you, you did a show in Raleigh, North Carolina, a long time ago. Or Yeah. Yeah, you, you, probably, don't, you probably don't remember the guy, but uh, he's, a, he's a fellow comedian as well and fellow actor, and he does his own show called Mikey's Adventures. And uh, uh, he uh, just told me that he, he's met you before, and... Uh, and how much of a nice guy you are, and whatnot, and how you're willing to to go the extra mile for some things or whatever, and and uh, I just figured I'd pass that along. <laughs> oh, I thank you for that. Tell him I said I appreciate it, and give my give my best regards. Oh, I definitely will. Uh, now, uh, with the in, in your start, uh, when you started doing the uh, acting and whatnot, uh, you were in all seven Police Academy movies. And yes. uh, And I understand that you uh, there's a, an eighth one getting made or something, or they're trying their best to get uh, to get number eight put together, and that's um, the executive producer of the uh, academies. He's, he's, he's trying to you know get something put together you know so that we can maybe make uh, the next two, and I really wish him the best of luck with it because you, you know how you know film is not easy. I mean yeah. most people that start making a film, if you look at the, the overall picture, only three or four percent of of all films end up getting finished, let alone be seen. Oh yeah, a lot of people start out, but but ninety. <laughs> Ninety-six percent of them don't even don't even get finished, well, or, I, even, or even even get seen. So it just depends. Are, are they now? Are they trying to like uh, bring in the old cast? Like I know you're 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 credited to be be a part of it, but are they trying to bring back the old cast at all? Or I wish I knew. Oh, so you don't really have no idea. You just know that you're kind of credited for playing your original role. Yeah, I, I have no. Um, unfortunately, you know, you know, when you do with studios and everything else, you know, they have their own. Their, they have their own what you call hierarchy as to how they as to how they do things. And and, and if you're making a film over in Europe or, or like a German film or yeah. an Italian film, it's a different hierarchy as well. Uh, they, they shoot things completely different than, than they do here. 
So basically, so basically, no story has begun. No, no people who have been besides yourself be enrolled. It's just a, a work in progress right now, kind of. I'm sure. I'm sure there's been a couple of. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure several scripts have been written, but you know, it, it just depends on on what's accepted. Okay. Because you know, the exec has to has to accept it, and the studio has to. Accept, you know, it's almost like a government. Yeah. In many ways, there's a you know there's a lot of a lot of yeses and a lot of noes and a lot of a lot of issues that have to be worked out. And uh, I I myself I just want to see Bubba Smith again. <laughs> I mean I, I you know I don't want I don't care about the politics. I just want to see my friends again. Oh, yeah. I want to see everybody that we've all grown up with. I mean you know everyone's grown up seeing them when I grew up with them. And yes, I want to see everybody again. It, now, would, be, it would be so fine to be able okay. to, to see to see Count Lahan all over again. Let's see Easterbrook, who by the way is an opera singer. Okay. And uh, Marion Ramsey, otherwise known as Hooks, yeah. she was a Broadway dancer for many years. And Lance Kinsley and whatnot. And <laughs> oh, Lance, uh, he's a golf pro. He's a screenwriter now and a golf pro. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Tim Kazerminski, Mr. Sweet Chuck. Yeah. Uh, he's, a, he's a very famous uh, screenwriter now. He uh, writes a lot of episodes for The World According to Jim. Oh, jeez. Because he, he and Jim are very, very good friends. Wow. That's amazing. I did, I did not that know nice? that. Yeah, that is. And then, uh, and then G. W. Bailey is uh, playing uh, the co-police officer on uh, 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 the closer with Kira Sedgwick. Oh wow! So you know, so and she, and she's, I believe she got an Emmy award for that, didn't she? I, I think so. I, I don't really know. I haven't really followed the Emmys. I, I don't have cable up where I live, but uh, oh, the closer, yeah, that's on TNT. Okay, I, I think I've, I think I've heard of it. So. She plays the, um, she's a southern, she's a southern girl. Yeah, she's a southern young woman, and she's from the south. But she has just taken the job of assistant chief of police in a big, big, heavy metropolitan city in the north. Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> because she has that ability to to, um, to to get confessions out of people, she basically she knows how to close the deal. So they call her the closer. Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> that's because amazing. she gets people to say stuff that they normally would not even open their mouth to say. She is. So just, you know what? So everybody's out there and all over the place. I try to keep track of everybody, but it, it, sometimes it's really hard to do. You get? <coughs> do you guys ever get together at all, like once in a while, or? Uh, or what every was so often when possible. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm, I mean, I just saw. I mean, I just got together with Leslie Easterbrook and Marion Ramsey just recently. Okay. And we just seen each other, and I know that there are conventions now. They actually have. Uh, o over in in Europe, I guess they have police academy conventions. <laughs> oh jeez. I know. <laughs> uh, how about Bobcat Goldworth? Now he's one that <laughs> Bobcat is still around. I hear he's working for Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. Yep. And, that, and that's the last I heard. I'm not really sure what he's uh, what he's doing, but last I heard he was working for um, Jimmy Kimmel. I know I know that he's directed before and he's he's done productions. So, oh yeah. So you know Bob's uh, he's a director. Bobcat he's he's been a director and a producer before. Now of all the films that you've done of the Police Academy, which one could you say was your all-time favorite? It's very difficult to say. I can't say one is a favorite over another. Because, yeah. uh, each has its own strength. Well, I'll working, working with Mel Brooks is yeah. cool because, come on, it's Mel Brooks. That's right. Uh, now, I'll, I'll tell you my personal favorite, and this is one I just rented. Uh, Police Cabby 4, Citizens on Patrol. I, uh, to me, that that that's a very, they're all funny. They're all good, and they all make me laugh. But police can be four. There's something about part four that's just so interesting. Cause you get you get an all-star cast, obviously, and then you get Bobcat go with, you know, who's uh, you know now the good guy, you know, because in part three he was the bad guy. You know. I heard he was. I heard he was going to marry Nikki Cox, and that didn't work out. I'm very <laughs> sorry for him because wow. Yeah. Uh, hey, he could have been on Vegas. I heard that you uh, you uh, inspired the the theme song to Citizens on Patrol, uh, the part four uh, movie. Yeah, I work with. Uh, uh, a gentleman named, I believe it was Mr. Stephen Tyrell, who went on to producing a whole lot, a lot of music soundtracks. Okay. Including the West Wing. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Mr. Mr. Tyrell, um, he's he's big, big, big. And but, I got a chance to work with him, you know, back then. Yeah. And it was kind of neat uh, because uh, you did a lot of the voices, obviously, or you, you did all the voices for the uh, for that theme song. And, and uh, it, it's very cool because, you know, uh, for you to be able to uplift your talents in, in your role of all all seven roles in the police academy uh, movie, just to be, you know, Mr. Voices. You know, they called you the the man of ten thousand voices. 
but I'm sure you got over 10,000 voices. <laughs> I can't even keep track of some of these things anymore. Now, I, I've seen a, a few bits uh, that you've done on uh, the uh, Internet or that you uh, put on your MySpace page. I'm actually on your MySpace page right now as we speak. Uh, you put a few of your uh, videos that, that you put on there. I like the Led Zeppelin one. That, that's, uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty interesting. That's I'm glad you enjoyed that. And how, and how you sound a lot like Wolfman Jack in the beginning. That's... Uh, I got to meet Wolfman. He was a good guy. He was a really, really, really good guy. I got to meet him a couple of times. And uh, last time I ran into him, he was uh, just before he passed away. He was uh, we were in Washington D.C. Oh wow! He, he was doing some kind of a specialized radio program. Okay. And he was really, really nice. And you know, I miss my. I, I sure do miss folks like him. Oh yeah, because you know there'll never be there'll never be another another one like him. Obviously. No, not. no, no. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen, baby. <laughs> Oh, and then how you howled at the end or whatever, you know, that's, that's funny. That, that's, uh, now, I'm going to ask you to, to do a few impressions or whatever. Like, like I know you, you did that night at the Jimmy's. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's very cool how you uh, grew up uh, inspired by Jimi Hendrix. And uh, uh, do you think you could do a, a random of voice impressions for, for the well, broadcast? Well, I'm, I'm right in the middle of a voiceover right now. I don't want to end up thrashing my voice, but... <laughs> Uh, but what I can do, what I can do is or just, just do a few or whatever. Jeez, oh, well I'm trying. Try. In what context? <laughs> oh, just whatever, whatever you think the public will like. Whatever you think, uh, the, up here in Northwest Minnesota. <laughs> uh, I tell you what, I, <laughs> I appreciate you know just even having a career is has been yeah. a wonderful thing, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, each sound. Everybody asks me which one's my favorite. I I can't really say because yeah. that's like asking which one of your kids do you like better. I really I really can't answer that question that yeah. way. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. Uh, I, I, I don't even know. I, I like I'm your gonna... like your 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 robot one or your kung fu master or whatever. That that that's oh, that's funny. That that's. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, if everybody wants to have a little bit of fun, they can go to ugo. dot com and, and and they can play the video game. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you, did you do that? That's where I I did that for the ugo company. No, I I did not know that. I they had uh, they have a little um they got a little they got a little uh, little um uh. Like a Jeopardy type of game show where you get the multiple choice answers, and if you get the right answer, you get. <laughs> but if it's the wrong answer, you know, you know stuff like that. <laughs> and, and it's good because it's, a lot of the questions are related to movies and television. Yeah. And there's, a, there's a lot of fun. Oh, stuff. okay. I think I know what you're talking about now. I think uh, you you did like 40 you did 40 questions or whatnot, and like name the yeah, or, something like that. And then you like name the sound effect or something like that. Yeah, or name, okay, yeah, yeah. There'll be a lot of fun with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've seen that, I, and I've actually played that a little bit. That's uh, that's cool. That's. Uh, but but all in all, now in your in your career, and I know you've had a, a good career so far. Um, do you think that the the acting community will will? I mean, besides the police academy, do you find yourself uh, uh, maybe in, in a in a future role here later on? Like you know, like 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 something different, or maybe even a serious role or something. <coughs> well, there've been some. Uh, uh, well, like I said, I'm I've gotten an independent film now. So. Okay. There are going to be lots of things that are going to come up over the next uh, over the next few weeks and months. You know, there will be more things that are coming. Um, the new uh, the new film with a I, I end up getting a, getting a very interesting uh, time to work with uh, Tom Hanks' son Colin. Oh, really? You remember him from Orange County? Yes, I do. Well, he uh, he's got a film uh, that was directed by Mr. Sean McGinley. It's called The Great Buck Howard. It's a, it's a Tom Hanks. And his son Colin, they're working together for the first time. Oh wow! And uh, it's John Malkovich. Okay. It's, and it's uh, it's different. It's called yeah. the Great Buck Howard. I can't even describe it to you, but it's along the lines of uh, if you if you enjoyed The Illusionist and what you call the Prestige, it's it's kind of, it's headed it's heading along in those in the in that direction. Okay. But I, I wow. think I think I think everybody will like it. Uh, and also the new National Lampoon movie the, from the from the folks that brought you Van Wilder. <laughs> oh, you're gonna be in that one, huh? It's called uh, it's called Robo Doc. Robo Doc, okay. Written by a doctor. Okay. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like if, if Van Wilder got a medical license, this is what you'd probably see. Okay. Wow. With, uh, with Alan Thicke and uh, and David Faustino. Oh, jeez, that's. So it's a very we just we just we just wrapped production on that. Have you done a lot of stuff for National Lampoons before, or is this your first time? No, it's my first time meeting them. I'm looking forward to, to meeting, the, meeting, the, meeting the folks over there, because, you know, the folks that brought us National Lampoon magazine yeah. and that wonderful, wonderful uh, 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 
uh, magazine uh, article issue that you, you, no one will ever see again from the 70s, uh, late 70s, early 80s. It's called, If You Don't Buy This Magazine, We're Going to Shoot This Dog. Oh, okay, okay. You remember that one with, 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 the, with the Jack Russell Terrier? I think uh, I think I do. I, I, it's, been, it's been a long time. I'm only, yeah, four, yeah, I'm only, tw- I'm only 23, so I just... <laughs> but that, that was, you know what, that, that, thing, that, that cover is still controversial. Okay. Really? Yeah, the one with the Jack Russell Terrier yeah. with, the, with the 44 Magnum in it. Jeez. Is. I'm and, sure. and, and, his little, and his little eyes are going, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the title says, if you don't buy this magazine, we're going to shoot this dog. Oh, oh they got in so much trouble for that. I suppose because they don't want people shooting their pets, you know. <laughs> well, you can tell, well, it looked too real, I'm afraid. Oh, yeah. But, um, but you know what? Um, working for Lampoon's great. Oh, yeah. You ever get to meet, like, Chevy Chase at all or anybody? Oh, or? God, Chevy I met years ago. Oh, geez. Um I, I tell you, I tell you what, I'm glad I wasn't a part of it, and that's that, that roast uh, where they roasted Shatner. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh, that was so cruel. Wow. Uh, Lisa Lampanelli is mean, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, I ended up, I ended up making the mistake of being in, being in the audience one 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 night, and she decided to just tear into me. Okay. So she she tore into all of us. I mean, you know, yeah. every 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 single every single racial group was represented, Jeez. and and other things too. But she uh, she made sure she made sure to to address all of us. Oh yeah. I tell you, man. Wow. Yeah, that is <laughs> I, unbelievable. I felt sorry for Andy Dick because he got the worst of it. Yeah. Boy, did he get the worst of it. <laughs> do, do you think they'll ever have a celebrity roast of Michael Winslow at all? <laughs> <coughs> yeah, anything possible? You know, anything these days, because the the whole world has changed. Uh-huh. Now that uh, you know, uh, when I think back in the in, in the in the in the in the, uh, in, the in the last uh, in, in the last uh, uh, century. You know, it, it, you know, in the very beginning, it took 12 hours. You know, back in the World War II days, it took 12 hours for people, for people to find out about things. Yeah. Now, when something happens, you know it in 12 minutes. Oh yeah, or even in a minute. You know, it's just or like, 12 or yeah. 10 seconds. Yeah. It used to be 12 hours. Now, yeah. stuff gets out. Yeah. I mean, people know it within 12 seconds. Well, the internet is such a good thing. You know, even even I say this about us. You know. Uh, you know, if it wasn't for the internet, I don't think I'd be talking to you right now. You know, I mean, it's so amazing how, you know, although we're so far away, you know, you're in Orlando, I'm in Thief River Falls, I'm in northern Minnesota, mm-hmm. and, and yet in like under, you know, 10, 15, 20 minutes or whatever, you know, we were able to communicate with each other, and, you know, it's it just, uh, it's so, it's so cool, you know. And, uh, <clears throat> let's see, uh, what else can I mention, uh, now, with uh, I, I'm going to credit one one film that you were in that I that I also thought was very funny, Spaceballs. Yes. You know that, that little, Mel Brooks picture is is an honor. I actually have that on DVD. I don't have this two disc special edition, but I have the original, the first disc that came out. You know when when DVDs started becoming popular or whatever. But uh, you're sweeps, bleeps, and creeps. You know, oh, <laughs> or did God. I mix that up already? <laughs> no, no, you got it right. Everyone asks me that all the time. <laughs> Uh, now uh, what I wouldn't give to be in another Mel Brooks picture. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any room for me in Young Frankenstein. What is, What is Mel doing nowadays? Do you ever catch up with him at all? Well, from what I hear, the next Broadway play of his is going to be Young Frankenstein. Okay, that's what I heard. Like a tribute to Peter Boyle or something like that, or sure, why not? I, you know, I, I wish I could have been. You know, I'm I'm just trying to imagine. You know, with, with Borat and everything else that's come out. Yeah. I don't think you get away. With, I don't think you could get away with, with making Blazing Saddles now. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to shoot that? Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? If Borat got away with it. Yeah. Oh yeah. I I see the, a preview for Borat, and at first because I didn't know anything about it, I didn't know it was that guy from the G show, uh, or the same guy basically. Uh, yeah, there there's a lot of racial and a lot of things that you shouldn't normally say to people. You know, I mean. <laughs> wow. Well, you know what? Borat got away with it. Yeah. I don't know how the hell he. I don't know how the hell Sasha Byron Cohen yeah. did it, but he got away with a lot of stuff. That you know, maybe it's because he's because he's not an American. Maybe that's why he got away with it. Who knows? Because I, all I all I know is a lot. Uh, half the audience was was was, was 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 gasping in shock. Yeah. And the other half was running around the floor laughing. Yeah. So. Oh boy! Talk I, about it. I think now. I think nowadays, when it comes to racial films and whatnot, you know, of course you got you got to watch what you say because Blaze and Saddles, in some ways, the original one was kind of a uh, interracial movie because it, you know, it, it would go beyond the beyond the the points, you know. No and, kidding. I mean, it, <laughs> and 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 the best part, the best part about it, movies like that is, uh, you know, Richard Pryor helped write that film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so can you imagine Richard Pryor and Mel Brooks? 
yeah, today. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the thing, you know, it's just hard to, you never know. You never know what to expect. But, uh, you know, now, uh, let's see, what was I going to say? Over here in Minnesota, we don't really, we have we have a movie theater called the Galaxy Twin, and that's where I got to see the uh, preview of the Borat movie. And uh, that was, yeah, that, uh, that's very, very weird. That's, he got away with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah. Maybe it's because it's English. Yeah. Maybe because he's an Englishman. Maybe did that's you, why he got away with it. Did you ever see the Ali G show at all? Or? All right, I did see Ali G. I've seen it before. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's the bomb diggity. <laughs> well, see, I'm, I, I've seen little bits and pieces, and I know they got the, the first season out. I think they even got the second season out, I believe, too. But, Boy, uh, a lot of people got snow big time. They should have seen it coming. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Even 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 those congressmen and senators, they didn't get it either. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't know they were being yeah. snowed. Uh, oh. Now, I was going to ask you a question now. You know, you, you see a lot of these people nowadays that are celebrities or whatever that, that have their own talk show or have their own show. Do you think in the future that you'll ever have your own, like, little broadcast, your little half an hour or hour? Uh, hour I'm trying, yeah, I think so. Uh, because I'm, I'm playing with different aspects of... of, of uh, the industry now that yeah. you know, I'm starting to get into production now. Yeah. Uh, we have Lenny the Wonder Dog playing right now, and I think it's on um, the movie channels running it this month. Okay. I, I, I remember for many months it's been Stars, uh, 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 Stars Showtime, but you know, people can go to TVNow.com and they can and they can type in Lenny the Wonder Dog. Okay. Uh, that's one of my productions, and uh, it's pretty good. I got to work with Craig Ferguson before he got the Late Show. Oh wow, that, that's cool. It was it was really good and. Uh, our dog is a show off, and it's, it's, not, it's, it's fun. Andy Richter did the voice yeah, for, the, yeah. for the dog for us, and I, I, I think Lenny turned out pretty well. Yeah, you know, and you know, uh, you know, like I said, it might open some more doors for you. What doors haven't been open already for you? <laughs> but you, you've had a, an outstanding career, and you know, it's it's just a, a thrill to be able to, like I said, to be able to talk to you. Now, do you think, you know, I know I asked you this already. But do you think you could uh, just do a couple voices? Just do like some random, either your Jimi Hendrix deal or just something that, you know, something to close uh, the interview, kind of. Uh, because I'm going to ask you to do a couple more things here be before or after you do your... Because we're almost, we're almost on time. Oh, well, I wanted to say thank want, you to everybody oh, and okay. thanks for watching and, and everything. And, and I don't even know where to begin, I mean... How about your Gremlins voice or your uh, Stitch? <laughs> you remember remember that from your the Gremlins days or whatnot? Oh, Stripe. Or Stripe, yeah, Stripe. I thought I don't know where I get Stitch from. Uh, probably from Lilo. Yeah, Lilo and Stitch or Lilo and Stitch. Yeah. Oh yeah, which is another another you know another one of those voice movies. Uh, well, let me think. Let me see if we can do this right. Um, because <laughs> like I said, I. I, I... <laughs> from Police Academy, one through infinity, and we're on the air. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Uh, and space balls with Mel Brooks! I think I was the left one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I tell you what, I, I do appreciate you letting me talk to you, and, and I'm going to ask you to do one last thing. I want you to give me a legal ID. That means uh, who you are, who you're talking to, or what show you listen to, and what station you listen to. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll kind of go in balance here. You, you can say you're Michael Winslow. You listen to the Frankie Slauson Show on Pioneer 90.1. Hi, Michael Winslow from Police Academy 1 to Infinity and Space Balls with Bill Brooks. And, of course, you're listening to the Frankie Slauson Show on Pioneer 90.1. Yeah, baby. <laughs>